open or closed top? That is the question here today with the all new Mercedes E Class convertible on Auto Gefühl, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with Thomas. We're going to talk in detail about the exterior, the interior finish, showing different exterior and interior colors and trims, and of course, the driving experience in this new convertible. It's supposed to be the top luxury part of a convertible. Is there really a difference to the S-Class convertible then? How does it rate to the smaller one, C-Class convertible, and also to all of its competitors? We're going to give you all the information you need and everything of that again in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So our main vehicle for today is Hyacinth Red, pretty spectacular red color or a wine red in that direction. And this one is also featuring the AMG line. You have to know that for the sedan of the E-Class you have a base model and then can pick between Avant-Garde and AMG for example. Here you only have Avant-Garde or AMG and Avant-Garde at the same time is the base trim. So you start with the Avant-Garde, I will soon show you the Avant-Garde front grille, it's a little bit different. And then for 3,000 euros extras, you can get the AMG exterior line, which is then already combined with the interior line. So with the sedan, you can mix exterior and interior trims. Here, you have to go for it at the same time, of course, and with even more extra price for the AMG line as it is here. But with the diamond pin, the shiny diamond pin grill, really a great choice. I think it looks really spectacular. Also, the sensors are hidden here, so we do not have a 3D Mercedes logo, but at least they styled it in a way that it appears to be 3D. Overall, the hood has been changed also from the sedan, so the convertible does have singular, unique parts indeed. So, just been talking to the designer, the hood is, for example, one part they redesigned. And here also with the optional multi-beam LED, of course, you do not have to go for them. 4 meters 82 or 15 foot 8, really a long vehicle, one of the biggest convertibles there are on the market. But the design is pretty simplistic. You see there's basically just one design line here on the top part and that is also what is defining timeless car design. 17 to 20 inch rims are available, 17 the smallest one, this one, 20 inch AMG wheels here in the AMG line also, optional, they cost a lot of money again uh, price wise. 42,000 for a C-Class convertible, 54,000 taking German reference prices for the E-Class. But this car as it stands here, a couple of 10,000s more for all the extras it has. And uh, one interesting thing is also, you know, um, for show-off purposes, for example, you can also um, open and close the roof with the key, also from the inside, of course, and you can do the opening closing process up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour and whole process takes 20 seconds is it true did you check the time code tell me in the comments so what do you think about the side profile i think simplistic one of the most beautiful convertibles for sure pretty similar to the c convertible yes but i think they're both beautiful or what do you think 
If you compare it to the previous Tesla E-Class convertible, this one here is not only 12 centimeters longer, but also a little bit wider. And characterizing for coupe bows and convertible, if you compare it to the sedan version, are those horizontally drawn taillights. They stress the width of the car and to me really more beautiful than with the sedan. Also this crystal glass work here on the inside. It's a great detail. I always love to point out those details. This one is the E300 by way, a four-cylinder petrol engine in a convertible. It's not, you know, about having the biggest power. Soon we'll also experience this ride. And fake exhaust tip again, they look quite good. There's a big discussion going on still at the moment and um, I've been talking to a lot of designers now, AJ has two recently and yes, those are design purposes but also engineering wise and let's say the connection between engineering and design because they for example said today they want to have all the models basically with the same look and for example with the diesel where you maybe put an SCR filter on there this wouldn't be in the same way possible than with the petrol engine and so they decide we put everything behind it and then we can make the outer appearance basically aligned but with the AMG with the true AMG models you still get the non-fake exhaust for example and let me also show you some different colors this one here also AMG line with a diamond pin grill and this one here is called Aragonite Silver well it is more gold to me surely a very unusual and expressive color especially in combination with this yard blue roof I love the the, the blue roof don't you or what about selenite gray with a black roof and interesting here too this one is not the AMG line but the base model the base model as I said earlier is avant-garde with the convertible you also have the diamond pins here but not in a shiny silver or shiny chrome but just in the shiny black style so it's a little difference than in the front bumper styling and Designio Diamond White Bride here also with 20 inch AMG wheels. So also in white, this convertible surely works here again with a black roof. What is your favorite color here today so far? Of course, there are even more colors available. Also something that comes close to Thomas Blue.
E-class key, as we know it also from other E-class. Then, first of all, there's you know the, the seat belt reacher or the seat belt help. You close the door and then you sit inside and you don't have to reach so far behind you. And let's see with the door. Yeah, there's also a soft close. Of course, you do not need it. It's just a nice to have. Then everything very well processed, as we know. Also galvanized the buttons here for the windows. This one here features, well, is it wood? I'm not sure, actually, so I don't think so. It's more like, you know, uh, shiny black surface with white stripes, the contrast. Optional Burmester sound system. Then the rest of the interior, this one here again is the AMG line. You can see that we have a flat steering wheel bottom, sportier style in general. The air vents you can see in the middle part and also in the outer part. Those are special for the coupe and for the convertible. Seating wise, the E-Class convertible starts here. It would be like this, exactly like here. You can see it. this would be in, in fabric and this part here as well in fabric. And the outer part would be leather red, so-called um, uh, Artico or MB text at Mercedes. I do recommend it totally. And also the AMG line stem, that, that was avant-garde standard. AMG line is then inside microfiber Dynamica. Dynamica is the company that is producing the microfiber or the velour and outside leather, leather red. So Mercedes does offer sustainable choices also for the convertible. However, today the full animal skin package. So then let's take a look here. Steering wheel can be adjusted electronically. So that really suits your style then. When the door is opened, you cannot <laughs> control the seat that well. But here you see it's possible then to adjust the seat in all of the different directions. Here you also have seat heating and seat cooling. You wouldn't need that when you have the fabric or the Alcantara seat. In general, it's a very comfortable seating position. The whole dashboard is pretty thick. You know, this one is the optional total super layout with the two big screens. We have a special video where how it looks like if you have analog instruments, for example. It's also okay. It's really okay if you want to save some money. Uh, comparison to the C-Class, by the way, if you look to the front in the C-Class convertible, you see a little bit more here. It's, everything is a little bit bulkier. You feel that you are in a bigger car for sure. Cockpit overview, I think. I mean, we have a lot of cars to compare to, and this one is really artwork in interior design. You know, the design scheme is called central purity. That means, for example, hiding those gaps. Um, here, for example, you have the ambient lighting then when it's dark. Um, we have shown you that also with other E-Class videos as well. The special vents here, they're pretty amazing too. And, you know, the widescreen layout, again, design-wise, it's very clean. But I will also live with a smaller screen here and with analog instruments there. Also here everything is drawn horizontally, so clean on the other hand, but then you got this central element here, for example, with this no, even not straight line. So you see this one is the combination then of, you know, cleanness and then some central emotional lines. And I think it works pretty well. Also small analog clock we have right there and still buttons for the climate control. So you don't have to do everything with the screen here again, you know, it's no touchscreen, so everything has to be controlled either with a central infotainment screen knob or also new here with the E-Class, you can use your thumbs and with those touch pads here, you can control the left screen with the left thumb and the right screen, for example, with the right thumb. This is a way to be able to control all the stuff as a driver still and not, you know, touching anything which may be even more distracting while driving. What do you think about this very interior? So as for the left screen, for example, here you can choose it then with your thumb and then scroll through the menus, have trip information right there, for example, or also have a, a GPS view, um, then you can see the directions. So there's much individualization possible. You can change the whole design, the whole layout here, for example, also to a more classic layout like this one. Um, or so-called progressive, as we've seen, or then the sporty one reminds us of uh, AMG style, huh? Like this? There we go. <laughs> so with uh, yellow, you can see this higher contrast here, for example. Not too good to see today because the sun is shining well, but I think you get a good impression. And then the main infotainment screen, for example, with a white look at the GPS system, you can zoom in and out with your thumb, so it's pretty handy, actually. 
Um, but you know, we also had experience where we were misled a little bit in the way with the coupe, for example. So I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the software. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth or also with, um, you know, Apple CarPlay and stuff. You know, see here, for example, Android Auto, then you connect your phone with the cable. And vehicle functions, for example, you can control so much, really. You can um, have a lot of different seat controls for drivers and passenger seat, for example, the massage function, all optional then again. And then you can also imagine why this car can also be bought not only in a five, but also in a six digit <laughs> Euro figure. Dynamic select, this one will be um, interesting because you can have the vehicle data with a nice visualization for approaching angles, for example. Also how the angles of the tires are and here some performance meter. So you can play around so much with this system. Do you think it's over the top or do you think it's up to date? What do you think? I want to hear your thoughts on that. Then the middle console, the lower middle console, two beverage holders in here and there's one USB slot in the front. This one would be a central infotainment stick if you don't want to use it uh, with a thumb, for example. You can also activate the camera system right here and the dynamic select lever because this one here has not the direct control, which would be a standard suspension. This one here has the adaptive suspension. Then there's also an air suspension available, but this one here, the normal adaptive suspension dynamic riding control. So and here you can open this middle armrest, two USB supports in there and those, is all, those are also the buttons for opening or closing all windows, opening or closing a roof if you don't do it with the key and here this one is the button for the so-called air cap system. Pretty amazing system, I can, uh, I can show, you, show you that very soon and this would be an alternative to the big wind deflector. So much great work with this interior, but then they put this back mirror in there. It looks like, you know, like a, from a 1960s uh, uh, car, you know, from a base trim level. I'm not sure. Why are not putting a beautiful one with frameless mirror or so? That couldn't have been so expensive, you know. So what about the rear? You see there's, see this kind of knee space when I'm sitting as a tall driver in the front. You have an entry hub, you see the seat raises upwards a little bit and forward and I've let the roof closed now um, to be able to show you even how I can get in here. Of course it would be handier if the roof would be opened but one of the key findings is of course the headroom and for me as with 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1 this does directly fit well my hair touched the ceiling just a little bit but I would be able to sit here actually. Um, knee room wise, let's see, I hope I won't be killed by the seats. Uh -huh. Okay, oh. so that would be the way I was sitting. It is possible but it's not really comfortable for me so I think four people with maybe 180 in meters or five foot nine that would still work. Four people with 119 meters and six foot two uh-uh. So, um, but I mean, this is more knee room and more headroom than most of the other convertibles. And yes, you also have some more space than with the C-Class convertible, for example. And let me open the roof when I'm sitting here in the rear with the key in my hand. I can better see how it looks like with the folding process here and how I do sit here. By the way, it's another USB port in the rear, not too forget that to mention. Now when I'm sitting here of course no one can mount the rear wind deflector. Oh wow well, even seat heating optional available for the rear seats and the rear passengers can also when the ignition is turned on control the rear windows. But the main question is when the deflector cannot be mounted here the usual one. What about this air cap system? Let's take a look. So and here we go if you pull the button in the interior this is the front one. And also there's a second a small wind deflector in the rear and then the airstream is pulled over above your head and then to reduce turbulence is here again the small wind cut and I can also put it down again and you can see it. And overall the system massively reduces the wind turbulence. You see it's all flat again. Massively reduces the wind turbulence for the rear passengers. However, I can just stress it again. If you're only interested in um, you know, a little amount of, here you can see I can <laughs> raise the window in the rear. 
If you're only interested in the wind turbines for the front passengers, then it's really more about the classic wind deflect and then you can also save the air cap. This is really more if you have maybe children or so and want them to have, you know, low wind level in the rear. So, rear view camera will appear with this logo, but also the opening mechanism. And we left the luggage here inside, so we can show you what is fitting in here. That way you see it at the moment, 310 liters of capacity. Or if you have the roof closed, as it is right now here, you can also have 385 liters. And then this one could be pushed manually in the base version, but here we also have the electric function to enlarge the trunk. And the interesting thing is that you can also, from the rear here, there are two buttons on each side, and then you can, well, it's not automatically fit, but you can unleash them here, and then you go here, and then you can put down the rear seats like this. Hey guys, uh, this one is, by the way, also remove it like this, that you can see through. There we go. And then you can also load through some longer things. And you might wonder what was that thing we had there between the seats. It's a very clever storage space for the true wind deflector. You know there is this new air cap system, which we also know from the C convertible, for example. But as a true convertible driver, you know that nothing really matches a classic wind cut. And if you drive with two people, this is definitely the cleverest solution, like this and like this. And then you also have a mountain. This one is then, you know, that you have less wind turbulences in the whole cabin. And I would also prefer that one. We had the same topic with the C-Class. I do prefer that one here to this air cap system. However, the air cap system is very handy if you're often using this vehicle as a really four people convertible. And of course, I mean, wouldn't really work in that way unless you have really small people. But that's not allowed again, crash safety wise. So yeah, let's leave it with that. But I think it's good to have it here. And some more interior stylings too. First of all, you can see this is a carbon fiber look for the covers then and the seats. Different form of animal skin seat here. But what I want to show you is also that in similar way, the basic avant-garde seat with cloth in the interior and leatherette on the outside, they look pretty similar. Basically with almost the same color code. They are gray on the inside and then black leatherette on the outside. You can check that one out in our um, special small video where I had an E-Class sedan in the basis version. Pretty interesting. And one theme is definitely that you have a lot of color choice. And here, for example, rather an easy style without AMG line. This one here is the avant-garde or base trim line, different steering a little bit. And here, this structured aluminum as beauty covers. And this one is definitely a wow interior with the navy blue and then with the bright contrast really screaming out. Too bad this one again is only available with uh, true animal skin in the special line and it costs a lot of money. You'll also be fine with the basic versions. But just to show you some more color variety here also with the wood that is used. But here for example with shiny wood cover so it's not a matte style. So what do you think about those very bright interiors? So, engines, petrol, four cylinders, two liter of displacement, 184 horsepower in the E200 or 245 horsepower in the E300. Then a three liter six cylinder petrol engine, all turbo, 333 horsepower in the E400. Or diesel, 220D, two liter four cylinder, 194 horsepower. And what about the AMG version? So, same as in the coupe, what we do expect is not an E43 or E63, but an E50, something in between.
let's start with the driving part, open top enjoyment. Of course this is for a convertible, a rather bulky one, it's a big car, so it's not this sporty, super agile convertible as you sometimes buy when you get for a convertible. This one is more about cruising and I have mounted the, you know, the big, my favorite wind deflector and we're driving now 75 kilometers an hour and I mean, do you hear that? How hardly I have to raise my voice. So um, windows up of course that you can hear my voice better and also our camera can be mounted right there. Usually I'm also this, um, this guy who is doing a lot of convertible riding with windows down, <laughs> especially when it's hot of course. Here first agile test, yeah I mean you, you feel the weight. Steering wheel is not exactly well, the steering characteristic, it's not exactly the most direct one. We know that, that uh, a lot of non-AMG Mercedes model have that. The suspension, I told you earlier, there's a direct control, that's the standard suspension, then there's the adaptive suspension, dynamic body control, and then there's the air suspension, air body control. This one here, the middle one is mounted, so no air suspension, but adaptive. And at the moment I'm in normal suspension mode and the suspension is so soft and so comfortable that you could tell someone or your co-driver, hey, I got a new car with this superb air suspension. Everyone would say, really? Oh my God, that's so amazing, this air suspension. So you can really make people believe that because already this, this adaptive one is so good. You can also put it to the sport mode, for example, then it gets a little bit stiffer. You feel that the bumps are transported to the road then more. This is more when you have some agile riding part, when I have some more fun. But as I already stated with the coupe, this is not exactly the car where you hunt it around the corners. This is more about the cruising. There's also a Sport Plus mode. Then also the shifting is even more controlled. For example, you, the car shifts up later and shifts down earlier again. More fun to drive. Well, someone left the car there without tires. <laughs> nice. And for example, when you want to overtake a truck in front of you, that might be handy. However, not when there's so much cross traffic coming. In the Sport Plus mode, the car is also better as for the slalom discipline, for example, better reaction than from the road. However, the biggest difference to the C-Class convertible is definitely that the C-Class is and feels lighter, is more agile here. However, you have more space in the rear. And you know, the going just through running straight line. There's so much sovereignty from this car coming. So it's definitely also one of the most comfortable convertibles, that's for sure. So if you want to do a, a longer road trip, for example, inside a convertible, that would be a good choice. So there's hardly any wind coming in here now at the moment. You know, you, we can still also activate this air cap and this gives us even more protection against the wind and well the question is really do we need it at all and does it make a difference then it's a good question let me just put it in cruise control about 80 then activate it again so now it's activated well, I feel that the, the wind noises that are coming are even higher now because in the front, you know, that the wind is being pushed over the car. Just feeling the wind turbulence is here. That's a funny finding. So I think it is a little bit louder wind noise wise, but there's less wind feeling inside. So, you know, the system is good really if you want to protect the rear ward passengers, but again, this test again shows now I'm not the biggest fan of this system so I'm more trust in the classic wind deflector does a great job it's a simple system it's a cheap system and the other one you know the question is really uh, even the classic wind deflector now it is 
comparison, in comparison to other wind deflectors from other vehicle manufacturers, fairly easy to easy to mount and demount, for example. And you know, if there are sometimes some that are really hard to mount and demount, then I can maybe understand it to to go for an easier system. Um, however, I wonder. I mean. The one we have seen in the Porsche 911, well, yeah, the problem is with the head restraints, you know, in the 911 facelift convertible, it was like a big wind deflector, but electronically drawn out. But that is only possible because there are no head restraints. Here in those mid-size or upper mid-size, as we are here now, convertibles, they are head restraints. And then you probably just need that, you know, you, can, you cannot put them put them electronically out. Now we're driving a little bit faster, 100 kilometers an hour. And I mean, yeah, it's of course a little bit louder now, also from the tire noises. But wind-wise, at the moment, I would still think, let's get all the windows down, let's some air in here, because there's hardly any wind coming in. It's really amazing. So this is definitely probably also one of the all-season convertibles. I could very well imagine, you know, maybe wearing a hat or something uh, and driving it at zero degrees Celsius just in winter times I would definitely do that so there should shouldn't be any problem with that when you have a jacket or so also maybe put the seat heating on or the air scarf however the air scarf that is also something again it's not really a must-have because when it's really hot you don't need it and when it's too cold you're wearing a jacket with you know your neck covered anyway so it's only something for those days in between cold and, and very hot that you could possibly use this neck heating function. Also the E-Class convertible, if you want it, is equipped with the most modern autonomous driving or semi-autonomous driving features. Um, theoretically I could take my hands off the steering wheel, it's not wanted that way, just for demonstration purposes you know, of course I have to be in control of the car all the time still. But you get it as the same as for the sedan and for the uh, and the coupe, and also features this autonomous lane change. For example, I just went for the turning indicator, or oh, here back again now. Yeah, move it, baby, <laughs> and that works flawlessly. So this car is showing us another step towards the semi-autonomous driving. I'm also taking a look at the head-up display, um, so that's quite helpful that I don't have to raise my view down to the cockpit side. However, sometimes I found that the head-up display here, head in the Kobe 2, is not so crisp and sharp as I would expect it. Um, I'm not sure if my eyes are getting worse, but they somehow don't get to get worse in the, in the BMW head-up display, for example. So, with the autonomous drive, if you compare it also, Mercedes has figured out it better from the systems, they are also easier to use than with BMW and work more flawlessly, but head of display wise I see that BMW is somehow uh, better in, in this respect. Again very comfortable right here, of course now at 110 km an hour it gets a little noisy, so I'm not exactly sure if that would be the most comfortable way to uh, drive so fast in the long term. What is this guy doing? Oh, motorcycle rider who's trying to put in the Bags is over of the loop. That's dangerous. Wow. That happened. Maybe you should pull out and fix his bag. So well, you know, I'm I also used to ride motorcycles many you know pretty often. Nowadays, you know, definitely a little bit more cars. But this convertible is always something where I say, you know, you get some sense of freedom still being in the car but it's not as dangerous as riding a motorcycle and you have you know some cage around you and you can also wear light clothes and, and stuff so that's definitely definitely an advantage so when you're driving it here on the motorway also it's just like an experience in any other e-class sedan or coupe just pure comfort the half autonomous drive works very well you can relax so much and also maybe put the seat massage on or something like that that's really great. The only thing, um, I, we have the seat ventilation activated. I would however still be happy if we had the Alcantara or the fabric seats as it's still getting quite hot with the animal skin service here. Um, 
you know with convertibles it is quite famous also to wipe things clean but modern fabrics are very durable too so and they can also be wiped clean so that's probably an easier solution and you can also keep the price down here by the way this four cylinder engine we are driving is 245 horsepower it's really totally sufficient for the car so you don't need too much cylinders too much horsepower especially not in the convertible if you have a small small sporty one it weighs less here it weighs a little bit more but this one here again is not about pushing the boundaries maybe more when you go for an e43 sedan or so however at the later stage we can surely also present you an e50 convertible then we talk about that subject again for now the acceleration is really fine consumption wise uh, it says at the moment we are just about 12 liters on one kilometer that's too much of course uh, I'm quite sure it will drop down a little bit more. We'll, can you give you an update when we reach our conclusion then? However, if you want to do some overtaking maneuvers, you still have the power also in normal driving mode. For example, if we go for some 90 to 110, let's go. That's it. 113. And I mean, you have always enough power also with this, this fossil in the engine. And if you rather let it roll and use it for cruising, it's no problem anyway. The sound is, of course, a difference. However, we have to know that the sound is always all now transported over the sound system nowadays in the modern cars. So um, they give you extra sound via the speakers. That's, uh, that has also become common sense. Sometimes also because cars are so well insulated that you wouldn't be able to hear the um, the proper sound than uh, yourself. So what we can also do is uh, getting off the motorway here and then drive on the motorway back again just so they can reduce the speed just a little bit and close the roof and then we can also tell you something about how can you ride this car with the um, roof, roof closed. Just have to reduce under 50 kilometers an hour and then it will work. So here we go, let's close the roof. 20 seconds, then we are fine. Of course, it's a big advantage for the soft top convertible because if you want to escape rain, you don't have to stand still completely. You can also start driving already by that. So now you also hear that it's getting way more silent here. It speaks for this, uh, I think it was three layer insulation roof. So multiple layers for good insulation also to be able to match that one. Maybe, well, not exactly of the coupe and the sedan, um, those ones are more silent, but I mean, for example, now I'm driving 120 and that's really very silent here and probably also one of the most silent convertibles with a closed top there are, especially, you know, sitting in cruise control again, the distance to the car in front of me is being kept. Blind spot monitors also is, you know, one of the options I would definitely go for with a warning triangular in the side mirrors. Most important thing to me, however, is the autonomous emergency brake is from stereo equipment. Yeah, I mean, we expect for that price of a car, but just to mention it, here the red triangle now is flashing, so signalizing there's a vehicle coming from behind. Also headroom, when the roof is closed, is really sufficient, so um, plenty of heavy room. I think I think they could have even made it a little bit flatter maybe design wise. So I'm usually more about you know what's the space on the interior, do we have comfort on the interior but this one could indeed have been made a little bit flatter for sure. So I think the main characteristics are really this very sovereign driving feeling, great assist optional systems, system systems for the semi-autonomous drive low wind noise definitely when driving especially with the fixed wind deflector which is totally my, my favorite and to me it's always good when they are easy and clean and cheap solutions also for you know for the problems you might want to encounter or to increase your driving feeling steering wheel and characteristic wise could be a little bit sportier for sure but it's a heavy car and this one might only be expected then for the E50 that is, uh, that is to come at a later stage. As we're driving now on the motorway, by the way, you see that the consumption is dropping down. And 
and now we're already below 12 liters and let me just reset that for a second and then you can see what is basically the idle consumption or when you're just having it set to the cruise control or how much effect it also plays how you really use the throttle for example you know when we're riding downhill of course car is hardly consuming anything you know <laughs> now it drops down to one liter but it will go down uh, it will go up of course when we're riding uphill again thing is you know on, on the first few kilometers you're driving of course the car consumes way more than it would be then with a with a warm engine here again it's pleasant to steer the car around for sure but you don't expect this really sporty approach if you're rather a fan of that because i also want to offer you the help for that one you would rather go with the uh, with the c convertible as for other very big convertibles i don't see others that are really matching this one this one stands out really in, in in many many ways definitely so i think to me it would be rather the question do i really need the the width and the length of this car or would i rather go and look at the mid-size convertible segment with you know, bmw sorry, five series you know, four series or bmw four series then the mercedes c-class or also the audi a5 for example, not every other manufacturer has a direct competitor to this one here. The question is also, you know, with the BMW 6 series, yeah, that would rather come close to this one here. I mean, it's something between this one and the SL. As we recently also had the SL again, let me also talk about that one just for a second. Because, yeah, the SL is definitely sportier. As it's more fun in, in driving, of course, doesn't have the rear seats, that's the main difference so this one I would really recommend if you're driving often with four people in the very same car also now fierce bumps you maybe heard one of those that was quite a harsh bump and maybe also sound wise it was a harsh, a harsh bump but uh, from the thing we felt here in the suspension in the cabin there was basically nothing so I can again stress that the suspension is really superb here now I'm getting pushed a little bit towards the corner. The only thing, you know, driving wise, that, you know, I still feel the weight of the car. So my favorite is there, the E43 as a sedan. That one was great in comfort and great in driving. Let me try that here with a sport mode. A little, it's a little better for sure. So it gives you more feedback from the road when it's getting a little bit faster and stuff. Now we're getting accelerating out of the corner. Yeah, I mean, it's good performance. You hear that high revving four cylinder engine, it's not a sonorous low frequency sound, but the performance is definitely there. And I will check the consumption, which is now at about seven liters because I have reset it to get uh, another figure. And at the conclusion of the video, I'll tell you more about when we've driven even more and different uh, riding mix that we can tell you more about the final consumption. The brakes you can apply are really good, doing a great job of course, but again you feel the weight of the car, you have to be sure about that. And um, I mean, probably it appears to me because most of the other convertibles that are on the market in general are really smaller and lighter convertibles. So this is maybe the, um, you know, the, the biggest difference as for this one. But surely, definitely a ride to enjoy as always and I think we gave you a lot of different aspects we have covered here of course tell us what you think about this very vehicle and now to our conclusion for today behind me the beautiful landscape of Mont Blanc. The Mercedes E-Class convertible for sure a very beautiful piece of automotive work. It is actually quite large yeah I mean there are a lot of smaller convertibles for sure. You also feel that while driving it is somewhat bulky it's not the sportiest one 
there you should rather go for a smaller one as a C-Class convertible, staying with Mercedes for example, but it offers superb comfort. The riding is the same as in the sedan or as in the coupe, so if you close the roof, it's so silent and if anyone told you it's a coupe or the, the normal sedan, you would directly believe it. The interior, really refined, also good seat material choices available at least, even if not shown today. The entertainment system may be a little bit over the top, I think. Um, so much function they are to use, you have to really learn in a couple of months, basically. There's also a lot of space in the rear. I prefer the standard wind deflector, then you have really superb wind insulation. You can drive really fast with open top, you can drive in winter times with open top, and of course, you can also enjoy it when it's hot, that's for sure. So really a car to enjoy and I would like to hear your comments about that one and also check out our next episodes and compare for example the C's convertible also the competitors we've driven in this very segment from the other manufacturers smaller bigger convertibles sportier ones a lot of convertible reviews also on Autogefühl and of course many more see you soon thanks